Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to start with a question. How many seconds or minutes of time saving would occur if the connection between Jindabyne Road and Hutchins Street were, were made? How many seconds or minutes would be saved? And how many people would be saved those seconds or minutes? Three, you may. I mean, that'd be a very difficult one to actually answer. Um, I guess the only parallel that I can actually make is that Judge and D, when they did their report on North Rosland Avenue, they looked at a, a number of different routes to and from that area, if you like. So they looked at people getting North Rosland Avenue from the CBD, going down Beach Road, or going around the Algona Road area, or going down Auburn Road. And um, surprisingly enough, the, the, the difference in time wasn't that great in terms of actually going through those different routes there. Um, I did it myself, just to check those times as well. and. Um, Yep, so, so the, the time we're talking about is more in the, in the area of the sub-minutes um, or, or, or that sort of um, period of time as compared to, we're going to say, 10 minutes of time. Um, so the main time waste of the people is where you get congestion at particular intersections or um, those types of things there, and that, that's where people might end up be sitting in their car stationary for a period of time. So when you get that, you have a problem when you get free-flowing traffic, the time difference is very, um, very small. I guess it's also worth bearing in mind there, because it was raised there, that um, the Algona um, uh, bypass doesn't work as well because of the roundabout there. Clearly, we know that it is in the longer-term plans, or the, probably the shorter, medium-term plans, actually, of, um, of state growth to actually try and address that roundabout, um, which actually will probably um, help in terms of some of those peak hour movements through there. Um, so that will help for that Blackman's Bay area in terms of people accessing um, to and from different areas there. So that's just worthwhile pointing out. Thank you. So just to clarify, was that sub-minutes or some minutes? So it was, it was sub-minutes. As in fewer than one minute? It, Less than probably one minute? Few, probably fewer than one minute, but I can't, I can't make that judgment without actually, you know, having the modelling actually But you could say less than there. 10 minutes, for example, less than five minutes? Yep. Yeah. It's, Not it's, a lot. It's, it's likely to be less than, yep. less, it's likely to be less than a minute or less than two minutes. So it's in that sort of ilk, I'd suggest. Two minutes for a million dollars. Okay. So for my, I'd like to begin my contribution now by thanking the Kingborough Community Safety Committee and, and also appreciating fully, I have actually spoken to a couple of constituents who, who do think that the connection is a good idea, and I validate um, their reasons for wanting, for wanting that, and I don't dispute um, that it would make their lives you know, marginally more convenient, but for the, I'm going to set aside actually the cost of between 650000 and a million dollars um, to save somebody two minutes. And I'm going to focus actually on a broader economic argument, which is that in the Kingston CBD, we want people to stop, stick, stay and spend. And we've actually interviewed via council mechanisms, not just the, the people in Jindabyne Avenue or the people in Roslyn Avenue or in, in Hutchin Street, but in fact, the, the Play Score Kingston CBD review found that people in Kingborough want a walkable and independent town in the Kingston CBD. And they didn't just ask one or two people, they had 1,814 direct contributions. So that's about 5% of our population. And what they found was that out of those 1,814 contributions, people wanted an attractive and engaging public realm. They wanted a connected walking and cycling network within and beyond Kingston Town Centre, which included better walkability, good quality footpaths, shelter from weather, pedestrianised streets, and better bike infrastructure. So we have done this massive engagement and we found that on average, the people in this municipality want something that is quite different from more cars on the road. And if you listen to Stephen Burgess, who's the urban planner who's worked with PlayScore, he said recently that more machines, every time you put a, another car on the road, you're, you're making it that much more difficult for people to walk around and enjoy the neighbourhood. And cars don't spend money in your community. People do. Cars don't pay rates. People do. And Stephen Burgess showed that movement costs and car costs are, are incredible. If you think about it, it, I'm looking at the stats here that say for every dollar that society spends uh, investing in 
um, roads and things like that, society has to pay $9.20 in those ongoing costs. Whereas for every dollar, if walking costs you $1, society has to pay about a cent. Because it's very effective, very cheap to have people, if they're in an attractive, walkable, pedestrianised area, very cheap to have them stop, stay, stick and spend in retail and commercial areas. Whereas paying for road infrastructure is enormously expensive. So the cost to society is $9.20 for every dollar of road infrastructure when you have cars, whereas it's less than a cent for every dollar uh, if you have walking. So I think there were some interesting things in this report, and I'm going to quote, while there's a perception in the community that parked vehicles in Auburn Road create a safety issue, observations by council's engineering officers and state crash statistics do not support this view. Generally, parked vehicles result in slower traffic speeds with motorists slowing and stopping to give way to approaching motorists. Here's an example of where community perception doesn't always necessarily align with evidence. So rather than relitigating a debate that has already taken place in this council chamber over the course of a number of years, I think we actually need to look at the evidence. And the evidence is that the people of Kingborough actually would like a walkable and independent town where it's easier to get to and from places through better walkability, through pedestrianised streets, through better bicycle infrastructure and good quality footpaths, as opposed to introducing more cars. Because we're not going to alleviate traffic congestion by spending a million dollars to save two minutes here. We're just going to move traffic congestion. And for all those reasons that you see in this report, for example, there have been no traffic assessments to understand the impact on road safety, particularly in the vicinity of Kingston Primary School and St Aloysius Primary School. So to remove the inconvenience for a concerted minority of people, we risk putting the safety of those areas around Kingston Primary School and St Aloysius Primary School in jeopardy. I just don't, don't see that spending a million dollars to risk that is, is worth the price. A recent report on the CBD area and its surrounds by PlaySchool identified Hutchins Street from Church Street to Channel Highway as an important link as part of the civic spine. This relied on reducing vehicular traffic and attracting greater use by pedestrians. A connection from Jindabyne to Hutchins would encourage more vehicular traffic and therefore do the exact opposite of what those 1,814 contributions wanted. So for all those reasons and many more, I'd like to thank the Safety Committee. I'd like to, um, to validate these, these wants and desires, but I'd like to put them in a broader context of what the community has actually Fine. said when they spoke to us. Thank you.